With only a single season remaining, here is everything that needs to be resolved in Better Call Saul Season 6. After Breaking Bad broke the TV world with its critically acclaimed six-season run and widely applauded series finale, Better Call Saul faced an uphill battle to come anywhere close to that same level. Despite the odds, the spin-off prequel and part-time sequel has continued in the Breaking Bad tradition by maintaining the same consistently high quality throughout. Unfortunately, the misadventures of Jimmy McGill and his cohorts will soon draw to a close with Better Call Saul's sixth and final season. With the cast forming a bubble in order to film around COVID restrictions, work on Better Call Saul season 6 is expected to begin imminently, and expectations for the final chapter are understandably high. When Better Call Saul season 5 ended, Jimmy and Kim were about to embark on their most ambitious scam yet after the latter became more involved with and more seduced by Jimmy's criminal line of work. Elsewhere, Gus, Mike, and Nacho attempted to take out Lalo, but the plan went awry and a very angry Salamanca is now on the loose, gunning for revenge. Many questions also remain over Better Call Saul's black and white gene sequences set in the aftermath of Breaking Bad. With so much ground to cover, Better Call Saul Season 6 certainly has its work cut out, but viewers have little reason to doubt Vince Gilligan and co. Now. Here are all the events and resolutions that need to happen before court is permanently adjourned on Better Call Saul. Jimmy and Kim's con career comes to an end given how Better Call Saul season 5 ended, the big storyline leading into the finale will surely be Jimmy and Kim teaming up to discredit Howard Hamlin. Kim Wexler now has a taste for danger following a tense encounter with Lalo and has left behind her legal career to join her husband's law-stretching line of work. First on their agenda is setting up Howard to force through the Sandpiper settlement that began way back in Better Call Saul's debut season when Jimmy discovered a care home company was systematically overcharging residents. By bringing down Howard, both Jimmy and Kim will get a sizable sum, but thanks to Breaking Bad, viewers know the operation will likely end in tears. Although Saul Goodman is still going strong, Kim isn't in the picture when Breaking Bad begins. Better Call Saul Season 6 must address why their Bonnie and Clyde act comes to an end. Jimmy and Kim, probably, go their separate ways following directly on from the above, Kim Wexler's total absence from Breaking Bad, Chess not even mentioned, suggests that not only does her career as a con artist end badly, but so does her relationship with Jimmy. Clearly, something will happen to drive a permanent wedge between Jimmy and Kim, whether that be her death, being sent to jail, a messy breakup, or going into hiding. Kim's whereabouts in the Breaking Bad era is one of the biggest outstanding mysteries heading into Better Call Saul season 6 and the audience need a clear explanation for her absence. Of course, Kim's fate may not be as straightforward as it seems. Ice Station Zebra Associates provides a rare link between Kim and Breaking Bad could she still be conspiring with Jimmy from behind the scenes? The transformation into Saul is complete over the course of Better Call Saul's five seasons, Jimmy McGill has gradually transformed from an earnest lawyer trying to leave his shifty past behind to Saul Goodman the criminal lawyer who embraces the less scrupulous side of Jimmy's personality. However, there's still some distance between the Jimmy of Better Call Saul season 5 and the Saul of Breaking Bad season 2. Bob Odenkirk's character currently retains certain moral lines that Saul Goodman ignores, and one or two final steps are needed before he reaches the point of no return. The completion of Jimmy's evolution could be triggered by whatever happens with Kim or may call back to the trauma of Chuck's suicide. Maybe Jimmy simply gets so deep into the bowels of Albuquerque's criminal underbelly that he couldn't back out, even if he wanted to. However it happens, Better Call Saul needs to complete Jimmy's transition before the end comes. Facing Chuck's death one Better Call Saul storyline that still feels unfinished is Jimmy's response to the death of his brother. 
Despite harmonious periods, mostly during their childhood, Jimmy and Chuck have always been at odds due to their conflicting personalities. Jimmy looked up to Chuck and aspired to match his success, but Chuck looked down on his brother's grifting and resented his aspirations to become a serious lawyer with his Chex Notes online degree from the University of American Samoa. Their feud peaks in Better Call Saul when Jimmy discredits his brother and humiliates him in court, which directly leads to Chuck McGill taking his own life, and since then, Jimmy has staunchly refused to address his emotions on the matter. Despite Kim's best efforts, Jimmy hasn't yet faced the reality of Chuck's demise, but this is something he must do in Better Call Saul's closing chapter. Gene deals with his problem, or doesn't, Better Call Saul still has plenty of work to do with its future timeline, in which Jimmy is in hiding as Gene and working at a Cinnabon in Omaha. The spin-off's most recent black and white scene saw Jimmy's gene identity rumbled by a mystery stranger, but the lawyer refused to make another runaway and resolved to deal with the problem himself. Quite how Jimmy plans to do this, and, indeed, whether he even can, remains to be seen. An air of suspicion still hangs over the taxi driver who recognized Gene, and Walter White's former attorney could soon find himself going head-to-head -head with the law. Through the Gene timeline, Better Call Saul bears the responsibility of deciding Jimmy's ultimate fate. Does he live happily ever after like Jesse, or is he finally forced to atone a Walt? Gus builds his lab and consolidates his power, Giancarlo Esposito made his Better Call Saul bow in Season 3, but, much like Jimmy, he wasn't yet the Gus Fring fans knew from Breaking Bad. Slowly, Gus has been constructing his meth empire. Hess sabotaged the Salamancas, while maintaining a friendly facade, secretly started construction on a meth super lab with a team of Europeans flown in especially for the job, and made contact with the ill-fated Gail Bodicher to become his chief cook. Everything was coming up fring until the arrival of Lalo Salamanca in Better Call Saul season 4, and now the lab is on hold, with Gus financial backer beginning to lose faith. To build towards the Gus Fring of Breaking Bad, the final season of Better Call Saul needs to complete, or at least resume, the lab's construction. Furthermore, the working relationship between Gus and Mike Armantrot must strengthen, since the pair are far tighter in Breaking Bad than they are currently in the prequel. Lalo Salamanca is dealt with a major factor in Gus Fring's rise to power, will be getting rid of Lalo Salamanca, and their feud will inevitably become one of the biggest storylines in Better Call Saul Season 6. Gus unsuccessfully attempted to have Lalo killed at the end of Better Call Saul Season 5, and the fiery Mexican will be seeking vengeance when the story resumes. Since Lalo isn't a problem in Breaking Bad, it seems clear that Gus will deal with Lalo one way or the other, but it's up to Better Call Saul to reveal exactly how that play out. Is Lalo is killed, jailed, or run out of town? Lalo represents the closest thing to an arch-villain in the morally ambiguous world of Better Call Saul, and taking him down will likely require the combined efforts of Gus, Mike, Jimmy, Kim and Nacho. Saul's Breaking Bad line is explained the premise for Better Call Saul's Lalo storyline was born out of a single scene in Breaking Bad. Jimmy is captured by Walt and Jesse, but he mistakes them for Lalo's goons and tries to blame something on Nacho. At the time, the line was simply designed to highlight how Saul's fingers are crust deep in numerous different criminal pies, but with these characters all coming together in Better Call Saul, the spin-off has some explaining to do. Why is it that Jimmy was expecting Lalo to come for him? Does Jimmy's line prove that Lalo survives? And why does Jimmy try and set up Nacho Varga? As things stand, the Breaking Bad line doesn't quite fit with the landscape of Better Call Saul. Lalo still thinks Jimmy is on his side, thanks to Kim, and Jimmy is on decent terms with Nacho. Better Call Saul Season 6 must move these three figures to a position where Jimmy's Lalo line in Breaking Bad makes sense. Nacho gets his ending, good or bad, 
he might be a fan favorite, but Nacho is in for a rough ride as Better Call Saul enters its final stretch. Coerced into acting as a double agent, Nacho is a high-ranking member of the Salamanca gang, but has secretly fallen under the influence of the family's bitter rival, Gus Fring. Now that Lalo is wise to the betrayal, and with Gus only using Nacho for his own ends, Michael Mando's character has nowhere to go in Better Call Saul Season 6 and can only hope to lie low until Lalo is in limbo. But while Breaking Bad automatically implies the Salamanca family's defeat, Nacho's problems don't end there, as Gus will surely be reluctant to let his mole walk free. Nacho desperately wants out after the cartel threatened his father, and by the time Better Call Saul rolls its final credits, fans will know exactly whether Nacho finds happiness or comes unstuck.